Now let's think about Fourier's um, equation for heat transfer. And uh, think about the meaning of this equation. And this is really a very constrained situation. This is one dimension. And we're imagining that this heat transfer takes place in, let's say, let's say through some kind of wall. And this wall is sort of infinite in that direction and these directions. So we're really considering only this small area here that, um, that the heat is traveling through. And um, the, the units of this uh, heat transfer, Q, are going to be watts per meter squared. Or, in other words, joules per second going through that square meter. So notice that the units here that we're dealing with are energy per time. So this is the rate that the energy flows through this particular wall. Now the Fourier equation is actually a very uh, constrained version of reality, we'll say. And um, that equation applies to the situation where you have, across this wall, let's say we were going to plot, the uh, temperature variation across the wall. The temperature variation is constant. So on one side of the wall, we have, let's say, uh, T, I don't know, T, T, I, and on this side, we have T, O. Um, now, in the Fourier equation, what we have is that the transfer of heat, the rate of heat transfer, is equal to negative k, which is the conductivity of the wall, times the slope of the temperature, or the, or the temperature gradient. Okay, let's look at the units of this, of this equation. We've got joules per second per meter squared, excuse me, uh, is equal to negative k, uh, times the temperature gradient, which is going to be in Kelvin, or degrees Celsius, per meter. So we know then to get to this, so we have over here watts per meter squared. We have to have on this side meter, Kelvin, um, and watts. So the K is in units of watts per meter Kelvin. Okay, now now that we have those details, let's just ask ourselves, what's the meaning of this equation? You know, what, what, what does it really mean that, that the, the heat flux or the, the energy flux is equal to negative K times dt dx? Um, well, it refers back again to this picture. So once again, it's constrained. It's steady state. And in order to get steady state, essentially what you don't say but uh, is implied here is this is an infinite source of, of heat on this side. Somehow it's infinite. This is an infinite sink of heat. So these are the implications of this equation. We've some sort of somehow snap, took a snapshot in time when these conditions might be true. Um, now when does that happen, really, in reality? Um, hmm. Not very often, to be honest, uh, but we approximate it. So a, a approximate time that this might happen will be, you know, let's say you're in Michigan and you, it's a winter time and outside it's uh, 10 degrees Celsius and inside it's 25 degrees Celsius. And the only reason it's 25 degrees Celsius is because you're burning a whole bunch of fossil fuels that enable you to keep the temperature stable. So you have a constant Q because of all the thermal energy that you're getting from this you know chemical reaction um, of burning of these fuels is being released into your home making this temperature a steady 25 degrees C and outside of course is the outdoors the great outdoors making this temperature a steady 10 degrees C so that's a situation where you might get a steady state heat transfer and you can see it's you know, not exactly steady state because you're having to burn this fuel in order to create it, but the profile across the window is approximately steady state. So this equation is essentially to look at what the rate of energy transfer through a, a situ a, some one-dimensional object when you have a steady state uh, temperature gradient.